All right, welcome back. It's still Rappi Dawn right here, uh, Channel 176 on Star Times. Uh, uh, it's a Friday. Hope you've been enjoying that great performances uh, by Westlife, bringing back old members. It's a Friday, so definitely it's a fun Friday. And um, so we are going to be having a conversation very briefly this time. Uh, and um, we're going to be talking about, like, of course, we mentioned earlier this month that June is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month for men. Um, so this morning we're going to be having a conversation. But before that, let's look at some of the statistics when it comes to um, mental health for men. Let's have that on the screen very briefly. Uh, so we have men are four times more likely to commit suicide, making up nearly 80% of all suicides. Uh, let's go next. 40% of men have never spoken to anyone about their mental health. And uh, one in 10 men experience depression or anxiety. Less than half receive treatment. And uh, so that's just some of the things that you need to know about that. Now, uh, two days ago, uh, news broke out about the former uh, CEO of Conga, who jumped off as the story was released, jumped off his balcony of his lucky resident. It was a sad one because it was reported that before he did that, um, he called, he gave some specific instructions. He called his brother, he called some persons and spoke to them. He called his sister and said he's going to be watching over her. Uh, I'm sure at that point he really didn't know. And people tend to ask this question, what is that thing that would make a successful person, I mean, in the physical word, successful, decide to jump off the balcony it's not spiritual mm. it can be interpreted some might say oh spiritual calling mm. but then it is beyond that and so this morning we have several cases of men who have been thrown to the end of the wall and they do not know what to do at that point and then they decide to resolve to the easiest way which most times is not always the best. We've had men who leave their family and just disappear into thin air because they cannot bear the, the heat of what is going on anymore and they can't speak to anyone. And so this morning, we're talking about mental health awareness for men this morning and we have a guest who's joining us. I think Ugo wants to let us know who our guest is. Well, our guest this morning is uh, the founder of the Nigerian Mental Health. Um, he's, he will be joining us virtually this morning. Uh, Chime Asonye. Good morning to you, uh, Mr. Chime. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me to have this very important conversation about men's mental health. All right. Thank you for your time. Let's kickstart the uh, conversation very quickly. Uh, perhaps with you telling us what is your understanding of mental health, especially as it has to do with men. Sure. Um, when we think about mental health, we need to think about that it, it exists on a spectrum. And, and the fact that um, there is no real true um, health without mental health. The right to health exists in three ways. One is physical health. Second is social health. And third is mental health. So if you're not dealing with the, the mental component of your health, you're not dealing with the full gamut of health. So if we look at the prominent definitions of health, it includes mental health includes things like emotional, psychological, and social well-being, really impacting how we think, feel, and act, how we can deal with and handle stress, relate to others, and really make mentally healthy choices. It also... Um, adjust with deals with things like good behavioral adjustment, making sure you're relatively free from anxiety and other disabling symptoms, and can establish really constructive and healthy um, relationships in the ordinary course of life. When it comes to men, the problem is that we have a lot of cultural stigma that challenges men from really having and dealing with their mental health. A lot of times, People think like, ah, you be man, just trust them. And you're, you're pressured to be strong and self-reliant. So unfortunately, a lot of men don't think about those emotional, 
psychological well-being because we're taught not to in our society. All right. Um, you've you've given us a background of this. Let's now let's come back home. You know, to Nigeria. Um, a lot of times, like you stated clearly, uh, men are told not to cry. I mean, right from when you're a boy, you are the man of this house. Even if it's a ten-year-old boy, you're the man of this house. You're not supposed to cry. Mm. Um, you're not supposed to um, show weakness. And they grow with this thought. They grow with this burden. They grow with this pressure. Um, do you think that as a country we are showing our men so much love? Do you think that as a country we are doing enough? Um, because I mean, we have so many organizations who are talking about women, girls, uh, but then we don't have much for men. So do you think that, I mean, we are doing so much when it comes to men, even in the private, let's say, okay, the government is not doing enough, but in the private world, do you think that we're doing something enough? I don't think that we're doing enough at all. And you were just, I mean, we have to think about this in two ways. If you're a man, there's no empowerment or conversations or spaces where you can be vulnerable. It's always chest time, now man you be. Or you're just talking about crying. People will tell you, you be man. How you they cry like that? You be woman. There's no opportunity for individual men to have these kind of conversations. And unfortunately, you mentioned what was going on when it comes to suicide. The face of suicide internationally is an African man. The highest suicide rates in the world, yeah. in the world, according to the World Health Organization, is African men. We have 18 deaths per 100,000 this is way over the global average of 12 per 100,000. And, and if we come to our own Nigeria, we're really having a huge challenge in when it comes to suicide as well, especially when it comes to, to, to men. We have, um, we're, Nigeria's ranked 15th globally when it comes to suicide rates. And we have um, a very high suicide um, estimate as it relates to um, the global average. So. We need to confront this issue head on. Okay. Um, let, let's talk about something that happens there where you have a lot of motivational speakers when um, they speak to men. Um, the conversation is always about push yourself, uh, go the extra mile, stretch your abilities and all of that. And even the society has a way of making men um, to know that they just have to be up and doing at every point in time. Now, where do we draw the line between a man who is just trying to put food on the table, a man who's just trying to pay his bills, a man who's just trying to meet his life goals and ambition, and a man who is obviously pushed to the edge mentally? So the, the, the problem is that we, we tell men that they should push, that we, we tell men that they should um, increase their productivity. But the problem is that we don't frame issues that are important to our emotional intelligence. As she think of when it comes to men is that they should be providers, they should be making money and things like that. We need to be reimagining and reframing the debate. Really, we need to be thinking about most emotionally intelligent men. The best way to be a leader, the best way to empower yourself, the best way to support your community is to be emotionally intelligent, but we're not teaching that. Emotional intelligence would be things like vulnerability, be things like empathetic, be things like being able to connect to our fe fellows and making sales available, not just as material provider, but also giving support. So because of this, this um, emphasis right now, we have um, increase of things like loneliness. The World Health Organization last year actually declared loneliness a global pressing global health threat. Yeah. And this is unique, especially with our African youth because of things like climate change or not having a job or or, or security challenges and things like that. So we need to make sure that we connect with ourselves and have vibrant fence. We also have issues of this economic impacts, as you as you know, right now. There's a direct correlation 
between not having good um, connection and economic social policies and the increase in mental health challenges. There's a study that says in 2015 that for every 1% of unemployment, there's a 0.8% of the suicide rate. So we need to be thinking about these issues differently. Mental health as an economic development strategy, but also mental health as a way for us to connect with each other and have more vibrant communities and make sure that we're available for our fellow brothers and sisters. The example I like to use is that there's a good awareness campaign that MI, you know, the rapper did. And he said that the, the, the um, campaign was called Guy, Are You All Right? Mm. Which is just asking our friends and our, our brothers, are you okay? Are, are, are you, you've been talking about, you know, parties and women and mo making money, but we haven't really talked about our emotional connections. We need to elevate having these kind of conversations and making sure we're available for men that's going on right now, especially in our trying economic times. Sorry, but is there a way to ask that kind of question and get a man to open up to you? Because, um, I mean, when I meet my friend and I say, guy, what's up? The usual response is, I did, or I'm okay, everything is fine. Do you get? Um, they paint a, a picture that everything is all right. So is there perhaps a way to ask that kind of question that now tells the person that you're really interested to know what's going on with them? I think that there's a couple things to do. The, the first thing is that you, I would always say you should be vulnerable. I think that people are more willing to open up when you are willing to set the platform, the stage, and give them the space to do so. Huh. So if you tell some personal experiences about emotional challenges or psychological challenges, I think that creates the space for the men to talk. So oftentimes when I'm having conversations with men, I'll start with a story of a time I was depressed or down or sad, and it allows them to feel like it's okay to share. So I would say the first thing you should do is be vulnerable. The second thing you should say is that you should make sure, you should make sure that you, you, you set the context of the stage. If you tell a man that we often do talk about investments or making money or women or partying or drinking, but I really want to know how you're doing. I think that men will know that you want to go a little bit deeper and they'll be willing to have that conversation with you if you tell them why. And then thirdly, I think that when you're having these kind of conversations, it's important not to be judgmental. Mm. It's important to actively listen. It's important to not interrupt the person and let them tell their story and not to prejudge their story. Just be observant. Don't label what you see them doing. Just tell them that you care personally about what you've seen, what you observed in their actions, and you want to understand what exactly is going through their mindset to cause what you're seeing. It. Are you that to me? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. So um, as we get set to wrap up, I wanted to ask something. You did talk about loneliness. You did talk about um, speaking up. You did talk about uh, a couple of things. Um, where is the place of the women in all of this? And I would ask that because I've spoken to a couple of men. And one of the things they say is that they cannot talk to their women. And sometimes these women are not just their women. These women are wives, girlfriends, this women, are, but, but then they find it difficult to confide, to tell this women what is going on. And it's so bad because, I mean, on several occasions, I've spoken to some men and they'll tell you that if I, there was a man who was going through a major surgery mm. and the wife in, in his house wasn't aware that he was having a major surgery the next week. So I, I said, I'm wondering who goes to the appointment, the appointment with you. Uh, is that bad? I had men tell me stories about how uh, they almost committed suicide. Meanwhile, their family was in the living room watching TV, but they didn't know what was going on with the man in the bedroom. So these, I mean, where is the place of the women in all of this? Well, there's two things I would say here. The first thing is that 
we need to have be very innovative in how we think about mental health issues. One of the things is that we only attach certain types of mental health problems with women. Let me give you an example of this. We think about postpartum depression or postnatal depression with women, and it's commonly associated with new mothers. Mm. But there's new research that said that postpartum depression and postnatal depression can actually affect fathers. Yes. It's estimated that 10% of new fathers suffer from postnatal depression. And you see, according to the National Childbirth Trust, 25% of fathers experience mild depressive episodes and between 10 to 12% diagnosed with depression within the first year of a fatherhood. So the first thing I would say is that we have to have more innovative understandings that the same types of mental health challenges that have impact women can also impact men when it comes to child rearing or when it comes to things that are specifically associated with women. So we have to reimagine what it means when it comes to mental health with men and women. The second thing is that because this is a societal issue, when it comes to cultural challenges, we need the woman to make space, to think about differently when it comes to leadership, to ask those hard penetrating questions so we can really connect ourselves and um, make sure that we have outlets to talk to. So that's what I'm saying. It's not just for the men to have these conversations amongst the men. We need the women there to also have these important conversations with us. It is a societal wide issue. And only if we tackle both genders will we be able to advance ourselves. All right. Now, there are lots of men who are in bad places mentally. Now, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about how um, to deal with that when you, you find yourself, it, it's bad, there's a mental health problem. But is there perhaps a way to prevent getting to that point? Um, I mean, can mental health problems be prevented? What are some of the um, things you might need to put in place as a man so you don't get to that point where it becomes dangerous for you and other people? Sure. I'm going to mention some personal things that I think you can do as a man. And then I'm going to mention some, some, um, some things we need to do as a society. Okay. So for men, I would encourage you, we know that loneliness is an issue, so you need to connect. So I would say things like joining a club based on your interests or goals, and it not just be about partying or about work, but also having connections outside of work in that third space. We need to be able to uh, make sure that because there's depression and anxiety, we need to set realistic goals. Right now, we're aspirational. We, everyone wants to blow. Everybody wants to be like Hush Puppy. We need to set realistic goals. <laughs> Hush Puppy is in prison. I'm not sure a lot of people <laughs> because, still want to be like him. Yes. I know, but you know what? Some of them, before he was in Dubai now, and everybody was posting his picture. So we have to be realistic about these things. We need to celebrate our small successes. Oh. Our men and women need to celebrate our small successes. We need to develop hobbies. We need to practice mindfulness. We can't be so stuck in the future or the past. We need to be thinking about the present. And mindful practices where we're very attentive to our bodies helps us embrace the present and what we're going through. We need to practice things like gratitude, Keep, keeping us in a hopeful mood hopeful about the future and we need to sleep Some, sometimes we're just so busy getting up early hustling and doing things we don't sleep and, and the truth is that certain biological things can impact this so if you're overweight or you do a lot of substances it might impact your sleeping ability so i would really encourage things like exercise for our men but but on a, on a more societal issue um, level, I would say that we need to implement some of the national policies that are going on. We have a new mental health act that was passed at the end of 2022. We can get together and encourage government to pass this thing to create an enabling environment for mental health. We have two national mental health strategies that were passed last year, a suicide prevention framework and a mental health policy. Men can get behind that and start pushing that. And then finally, um, you can go on our website because one of the things we're trying to do is decriminalize attempted suicide. 
right now, if people are in a psychologically vulnerable state and they attempt suicide, they are arrested based on our current criminal law instead of giving the care their need. So we have a petition called um, Suicide Not Crime Nigeria. You can find it on our website, www.nigeriamentalhealth.org. And you can sign our petition so we could decriminalize attempted suicide. If, if we do this on a personal level and on a societal level, then we'll be able to create the enabling governance architecture to support our men to survive and thrive. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, that that's um, that you've spoken so well about that. There are a couple of questions that I wanted to ask, but um, what do you think about the recent uh, problems of women killing husbands? Because in recent time, from 2018, the rate of women killing their husbands have increased, and um, uh, it just seems like nobody's talking about that. Nobody's making it a priority to talk about it. Is there, is there anything that you're doing about that? Is there any petition on that? Is there any advocacy you're doing on that? And um, what do you think about, what's your general thoughts on that? Well, I, 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 Hello, Mr. Chima, are you still there? And mortality sometimes. Yes, can you guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we yes. can hear you now. Continue, please. Okay, what I was saying is that I think the focus of this conversation shouldn't be on homicide, or so men or women killing each other. I think it should be about people taking their own lives. You started this conversation about Conga, mm. the Conga CEO taking his life, and, and, and he jumped off um, his Balcony. building. Yeah. The two most common modes of, su of, of suicide, unfortunately, in Nigeria is hanging by 41% and poisoning by 34%. And it varies between women and men. So jumping is actually one of the third ways, those most prevalent ways that somebody might take their life. Mm -hmm. In the suicide prevention policy, it talks about different ways we can tackle things like suicide for men and women, because there's variations in the ways people take lives between women and men. For women, for instance, the most popular way is poisoning. For men, it's hanging, unfortunately. So we need to tackle these things from multidisciplinary ways. What I would say for if you're a man or a woman is that if you need help, you can access help from our website. Um, if you go to www.nigeriamentalhealth.org, we have a list of crisis hotlines and suicide hotlines. If you feel like you want to hurt someone, if you feel like you want to take your own life, if you feel like you're depressed or sad, you can go to our crisis hotlines. We have them from of all that's available from NGOs and from government. And so you can call and you can get the help and support you need. I think that the challenge is that the resources and the outlets for people to talk about what they're dealing with are not there mm. whether you're a man or woman or whether you're a woman or man we need to give people the resources and tools so they can talk about the things that are going on in their life that are making them feel violent clothed that are making them feel triggered that are making them that um that can unwind all the prevailing trauma that they've had in their lives because that's what causes people to snap when they have these societal challenges or these personal conflicts and this unresolved trauma so please, if you're someone in need, go to our website, www.nigeriamentalhealth.org. Contact our, our uh, crisis hotlines, our emergency mental health uh, outlines. There'll be somebody there to talk to you about what you're going through. Mm. All right. It's been a very um, profound conversation this morning and uh, our time is almost up. Please, what are your last words on this conversation? In June, I mean... Um, uh, there was a lot of conferences organized, lots of webinars and interactions like this uh, to talk about uh, men's mental health, how to raise awareness on the subject. But beyond the month of June, how can we keep talking about this and making sure that men are opening up and talking about their struggles? I would say that you should, you should, we, we like to empower ourselves. And mental health is something that's an ongoing conversation that happens every day. So 
outside of it being June, you can practice the suggestions I gave you, whether it's mindfulness, whether it's listening to music, whether it's asking your friend, whether it's educating yourself. So what I would say is that people should continue to educate themselves on this subject. Oh. Again, you can go to our website, www.nigeriamentalhealth.org. We have mental health resources. We have the mental health policies from the country. We have um, different information focused on mental health when it comes to suicide, mental health when it comes to things like innovative new things like elections. We need to continue to empower and educate ourselves. And um, there's also other months that are focused on mental health coming up. September is Suicide Awareness Month. October is World Mental Health Month. And so there's going to be a lot of opportunities to have these conversations. But if people want to get connected to spaces and have continued conversation, please continue to follow us uh, at, at NigeriaMentalHealth.org. And because we continue to have sessions to make spaces for these important type of conversations. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Chima Asonye, a mental health advocate and founder of Nigerian Mental Health. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you so much for having me today. All right. Mm. Great conversation. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Great conversation. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, some of the points that he raised there about things that men could do you know, to help them not get to that tipping point. Yeah, I think I'm going to explore one this weekend. Okay. Do you want to guess which one it is? Any plan of you that I'm not inside, I don't want to guess. <laughs> and I'm sure that that plan of yours, I'm not in it. So no problem. I don't want to guess. <laughs> Oh my goodness, uh, we've had uh, such an amazing ride on the show today and the entirety of the week. It's been uh, a wonderful ride and um, <laughs> wonderful in, in some sense. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for being there from Monday to today and um, uh, for following us. Uh, remember, uh, the conversation that we just had and all of the conversation that we had throughout the week and find on our youtube uh, channel at official rapi tv but make sure you push the bell button first so you can get notified on all of the content that we're putting out there and make sure you follow us on our social media platforms on facebook and instagram as well remember to follow your favorite people myself and uh, uh cynthia we're back again uh next week uh, we're hoping that you don't miss us too much because we're mm -hmm. definitely going to miss you yes Cynthia Agbo is my name. I would always say be good to yourself. Uh, enjoy the good things of life if you have the opportunity because life is for the living. Live, love, be happy. You only do this once and eat your savings if possible. <laughs> if you, I, mean, I mean, it's a Friday. It's a good time for you to turn up. And Listen, that's going to give you mental health problems. No, it won't. It, it, first it, of all, it's going to give you financial problems and then later you deal with it mentally. No, th there are two things that happen. You either implode or you explode. So which is better? Explode. I wouldn't give you that kind of advice, but Uguchuku Madimir is my name. Adios.